a picture of a day unlike any other in American history. We're going to be playing more exclusive footage throughout this hour. But first, we want to talk about what we have just seen so far, that 17 minutes, uh, which starts off in Speaker Pelosi's office, her grandson watching and others watching the mob approach the Capitol. You see her and uh, others being evacuated, going, ending up at Fort McNair, where they are. Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Pelosi, even as she's being evacuated, she is urgently telling anybody who will listen that if they stop this, they will have succeeded. We will have totally failed. She's working the phones, even as she's being evacuated, to insist that this process of certifying the election results must continue no matter what happens. Uh, and then they work the phones for hours with Chuck Schumer and others uh, going, blasting Jeffrey Rosen, the acting attorney general, demanding that he get the president to make some sort of a statement, demanding that they start arresting protesters uh, uh, before they are able to, to get away. Joining us right now is Bob Woodward, CNN political analyst Carl Bernstein. Together they broke some of the biggest stories, the Watergate scandal separately. They remain prolific authors, investigative reporters, in Bob's case, one of the leading chroniclers of the moments you've just seen. Uh, Bob, you, you just watched this for the first time. Uh, as you reflect, w w what sticks out to you? What it tells us about Donald Trump first. I mean, the idea that he was watching this, uh, a, cl a case has been made that has, uh, is provable that he's behind this. So where's the common decency? And then, uh, as you noted, the Republican leaders, uh, Kevin McCarthy from the House, uh, Mitch McConnell from the Senate, are in on this. They are meeting with Pelosi and Schumer. They're trying to get out of it. And what are the relations that no one had Donald Trump's cell phone number or knew how to get a hold of him in a way. And then I, I guess the third thing, which is so important, there is a moral authority dimension to the presidency. The president has to, I, as we know, somebody will get uh, detained illegally in Russia, China, Iran. The president will be on the case. Where was the president? The president was sitting this out and uh, responsible. It, it's another chapter in the January 6th horror. Carl, I mean, it's extraordinary to me to see Speaker Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Steny Hoyer there talking to the acting secretary of defense saying, pretend this is the Pentagon, pretend this is the White House Stop giving us the runaround, essentially, and get people there. We, they need people on the ground. And nobody is calling. It's not as if Donald Trump is involved in any of this. This is being led. I mean, Nancy Pelosi is in charge in this one. Chuck Schumer is in charge. Steny Hoyer and some of these others. They know that they have to save American democracy. It's really moving. That you see the leaders of the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and the Vice President of the United States, states, knowing that they have a deadline to finish this job. And you hear Pelosi say, and you hear the others say, if we can't get this job done by tonight, God knows what the consequences are. And then you think about what happened afterwards when McConnell, when McCarthy, who had been so instrumental in this, turn around and for the next year and a half, enable Trump to keep saying, they stole the election, and McConnell is silent. And McCarthy is saying this investigation by the, by the committee is a partisan witch hunt. And by the way, Bob, you know, you have uh, Republicans uh, with revisionist history saying, oh, well, you know, it wasn't so bad. Uh, they were just tourists walking through uh, the, the corridors in the Capitol. Well, you have McCarthy there hiding in Fort McNair just like everybody else, sensibly, being brought there for their own security. McConnell, you have Steve Scalise there as well. Any talk of, oh, these were just, you know, regular tourists, certainly didn't seem like the Republicans believe that. There's, there's McCarthy right there staring at the camera. He didn't seem to believe that on that day. 
Well, of course, and, and McConnell and McCarthy initially came out and denounced Trump for this. And as Carl rightly points out, then they've uh, shifted their position to safe uh, territory for Republicans in the Trump era. But, I mean, the whole thing is so absurd.